Welcome back from spring break and welcome back to your flipped classroom for lesson 9.2. Today we're going to look at uh, how to solve quadratic equations by graphing. Now if you remember quadratic equations, when we graph quadratic equations, the graph is a parabola. So that's the first thing I want you to remember. Parabolas open up or parabolas open down. So when we're talking about quadratic equations, we're talking about parabolas. But when we're talking about solving these quadratic equations, we are going to look at finding where these parabolas cross the x-axis. So if you look at the essential question for today, it says, how can you use a graph to solve a quadratic equation in one variable? So we know the quadratic equation, let's go ahead and highlight this just as a reminder, is the nonlinear equation ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Now it equals zero because it's an equation. So an equation has to have an equal sign, so it equals zero. Now the solution, when I ask you for the solution to a quadratic equation, I'm talking about the x-intercepts of the graph. Okay, again as a quick review, x-intercepts are the points where our graph crosses the x-axis. So here are your options. You can have two real solutions, that means the graph is going to intercept the x-axis twice. You can have one real solution, which means the graph intercepts the x-axis one time. Or you can have no real solution, which means the graph is a parabola, but it does not cross the x-axis at all. So this should be a pretty quick lesson. You need to grab your uh, phones uh, so that you can use Desmos. But let's look at example number one. It says solve the equation by graphing. So if to solve an equation, it means we find the x-intercepts, once you graph these, then you're going to have to identify the x-intercepts. All right. Now, in the past, we have uh, graphed the uh, vertex, and we've drawn the axis of symmetry. When we're solving equations by graphing, I'm going to be a little bit uh, less uh, strict about that. Mainly, I want you to graph three points. Now, we definitely want any x-intercepts that we have, we want to make sure we graph those. All right, so go ahead and uh, use Desmos, and uh, remember that the y has to be replaced with a zero. Now, it's important that you make sure that everything is on one side of your equation, which means everything is going to be on one side, and it's going to be set equal to zero. But before you plug this into Desmos, you have to replace the zero with a y. Because if you put zero into Desmos, it's not going to recognize the equation, and it's not going to graph it for you. So you look at letter A, everything is already on one side. It's already set equal to zero. So just make sure when you plug this into Desmos that you don't plug in a zero, but that you make that a Y when you plug it into Desmos. So go ahead and do that and take a minute. Now when I look at these points, I very clearly see where this graph crosses the x-axis twice. So I am definitely going to plot the point negative 1, 0, and I'm going to plot the point 2, 0. And I'm going to label these points, okay, negative 1, 0, and 2, 0. Now, here's where it gets a little bit tricky. The vertex on this graph is not an exact value. So if you want to try to guesstimate, if you want to try to draw that vertex uh, where you see it and label that point, then by all means go for it. But I see uh, a more distinct point at 0, negative 2, and so I'm going to plot 0, negative 2, and then when I draw my parabola, I'm just going to be careful to make sure that I don't make that uh, 0, negative 2 my parabola, or I'm sorry, my vertex, because it's not my vertex, it's a point on my uh, parabola. And again, I'm not real worried about an axis of symmetry, because right now I'm trying to solve this equation by graphing, which means I can see that this parabola crosses the x-axis at both negative 1, 0 and 2, 0. So these ordered pairs would be my final answer because they are the solution to this equation. Now I want you to hit pause and I want you to do the same thing uh, with letter B. I want you to plug it into Desmos. But what do you notice about this problem? Before you go plug it into Desmos, recognize that everything is not on one side. So we have x squared equals 3x minus 3. And I know that moving just x squared would be much easier, but remember, we don't like a negative leading coefficient. So if we move the x squared, it's going to be negative x squared. So instead, we're going to move the 3x by subtracting, 
and we notice that these are not like terms, so we just bring them down separately, and then it equals negative 3, and we're going to move the 3 by adding it. Again, none of these are like terms, so x squared minus 3x plus 3 now equals 0. And of course, when we go to plug this into Desmos, we're going to replace the 0 with a y. So go ahead and hit pause, plug this equation into Desmos, and then we'll talk about it when you're done. Now I can see that this graph doesn't actually touch the x-axis at all. So I can go ahead and say no solution. Remember, the solution to these equations are the x-intercepts. So if this graph never touches the x-axis, it has no solution. But of course, we still have to graph it. So I see a very distinct point at 0, 3, and I'm going to label that. I see a very distinct point at 3, 3. So I'm going to plot and label that. And then again, if you want to do the vertex and you want to put that uh, odd uh, ordered pair, that's totally fine. Uh, but I see a point at 1, 1. So I'm going to plot and label that. And then I'm just going to be very careful that when I draw this, I recognize it is not my vertex. It's just another point on my parabola. Now let's look at one more. Let's look at letter C. And here you can see this is what, when I plug these into uh, Desmos, these are the graphs that I got, and that's what I put onto uh, my graph. But if you look at letter C, it says x squared plus 10x equals negative 25. And hopefully you recognize right away that everything is not on one side, so we need to make sure we uh, do that first. We have x squared plus 10x equals negative 25, and of course we're going to add 25 to both sides. None of those are like terms, so x squared plus 10x plus 25 equals 0, and when we plug this into Desmos, the 0 has to be a y. So hit pause, plug it into Desmos, and transfer what's in Desmos onto your graph. Now I saw one very distinct point, one point where my graph touched or intersected the x-axis. So of course I'm going to plot that point. It was at negative 5, 0. I'm going to plot and I'm going to label it. And then I see another point at negative 7, 4. So I would plot negative 7, 4 and label it. And then I saw a point at negative 4, 1. And so I'm going to plot and label that one as well. Now, this time, the negative 5, 0 was the vertex of my parabola. So when I draw my parabola, I'm going to make that my vertex. And of course, if the solution is the point or the x-intercepts, I can see that there is one solution to this problem, and it is the ordered pair negative 5, 0. So I'd write that ordered pair, and I would box it in. Now, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to put uh, this kind of equation. Oh, and again, here is what I got when I put this in uh, to Desmos, so you can see where I got the graph that we just drew. Now, last thing we're going to do is we're going to answer the following question. We're going to take this word problem, okay, and we're going to um, answer the question based off of our graph. It says, at a Civil War reenactment, a cannonball is fired into the air with an initial vertical velocity of 128 feet per second. The release point is 6 feet above the ground. The function h equals negative 16t squared plus 128t minus 6 represents the height h in feet of the cannonball after t seconds. Using a graph, after how many seconds is the cannonball 150 feet above the ground? Now, the equation is right here in the formula for us, and we're just going to make sure that when we plug this into Desmo, we plug in a y and we plug in an x where there's a t. Okay, it doesn't change anything except we want Desmos to recognize the equation. So go ahead and take that equation and plug it into Desmos and transfer what you see onto your graph. Now, this vertex was very, very, very high up, like way off of our graph. All right, um, so what I focused on was those x-intercepts. And if you see um, what I got on Desmos, I got a negative, or I got a 1.3540 and a 6.6460. So when we graph that, we've just got to kind of guesstimate where that's going to be, which would be a little bit past uh, the, sorry, it took me back. We're going to be a little bit past uh, the 1 to represent the 1.3. 
and then we're going to be a little bit past halfway. It's 6.6, .6, so a little bit, a little past uh, the six. Okay, and obviously our graph is not going to be anywhere close to being as high as that one. You know me, I'm the worst at drawing these parabolas, so let's just focus on these points. Okay, it was 1.3. I'm actually going to have to rewrite this a little bit better. Okay, this was 1.354 comma 0. And this one was 6.64, 6 comma 0. All right. So if you take your Desmos, it should be right there beside you, and you slide all the way up. If you slide all the way up until you hit 150 on the y-axis, hopefully you can see very easily that the points, hey, when you go all the way up to 150, you can tell that if you're going to be on the graph, you are actually on these or above these two intercepts. So when it says using a graph, after how many seconds is the cannonball 150 feet above the ground? Again, if you go all the way up to 150 on your y-axis and you go over to the graph, both, both x-intercepts okay, have a y-value of 150. So the answer to this question is 1.4 seconds at 1.4 seconds on its way up at 1.4 seconds it is at 150 feet and then on its way back down at about 6.6 .6 seconds it's also at 150 feet so you have to be able to interpret the graph okay the cannonball is going up into the air and then it's coming back down so it it is at 150 feet twice it's at 150 feet on its way up 1.4 seconds and it is at 150 feet on its way down which is 6.6 .6 seconds so that is how you use a graph to answer this type of word problem now before we end this lesson i want you to go back to example one letter b and i want you to write underneath the graph uh, your most favorite thing you did during spring break all right this is going to let me know that you watched this video to the end and um, that is lesson 9.2. I'll see you tomorrow.